Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in. Welcome to the Reignited Prayer Call. Good morning. Come on in. Come on in. Good morning. Welcome, Francis. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in. Come on in. Lisa, cousin, good morning. Jean, good morning. Good morning, Pastor Amy. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Minister Shalanda. Good morning, Mitzi. Good morning. Come on in. Good morning, Rochelle. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mama Norma. Good morning. Good morning, Prophetess Tish. Good morning. Good morning, Latori. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, you guys. Happy Monday. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to those that are on the phone line this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Tay. Patricia, welcome, you guys. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on in. Come on in. Oh, that's weird, Pastor Amy, because I have Sprint, too. So that's weird. We'll have to figure that out. Good morning, Crystal. Good morning, BF. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor Amy. I'm, I'm tired. So they, when I'm tired like this and they're kind of watery, they really be um, whatever color. I don't know what color they are. I can't believe that I made it again. Yes. Mama Norma, you made it. You made it. Yes. Good morning, Sonya. Good morning. Good morning, Minister Tammy. You guys are welcome. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Yes. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Yes. The song that's playing this morning is just simply called Cleanse Me. It's called Cleanse Me. Yes, how many of you want God to just cleanse you on this morning? Just get rid of some impurities, cleanse you. Even before we go into 2021, there's some things in us that we need to be rid of. We need to be cleansed. And so that's where we're going this morning. Good morning, Prophetess Nishan. Good morning, Joanne. Good morning, Mama Joanne. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Jackie. I don't know if I said good morning already. Good morning, Pam. Welcome, Pam. Good morning, Shatima, Devin, Cornelia. Welcome. Yes, yes. Every now and then, we just got to be cleansed. Yes. Yes. Cleanse me. Yes. Good morning, Idella. Good morning. Thank you, God, for another day. Yes. Present in, woke up right on time. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Good morning, TT. Good morning. Good morning, Lady Evelyn. Good morning, Veronica. Good to see you this morning. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you guys. It is just, y'all just don't understand how humbled and honored I am um, for each of you guys getting on every single morning and just, you know, worshiping God with us and getting a word from the Lord. That means so much because you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. And so I am just so grateful um, for each and every one of you. Good morning, Chanel. Welcome, Chanel. Good morning, girl. 
Good morning, good morning. So we're gonna go ahead, good morning, Cousin Kim. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started this morning. And uh, uh, the I, I can say it, normally when you're fasting, um, you don't really, you know, let anybody know that you're fasting. You don't, you know, look sad and, you know, all, you know, when you're fasting. But um, I've been participating in a corporate fast the last seven days. And today is the last day of the corporate fast. And I tell you, it has been a tremendous, tremendous um, spiritual experience these last seven days. And we've been literally fasting um, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. No food no 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 smoothies no nothing just pure water nothing else just pure water and so um this is actually the first time that i've done it so long in a consecutively in a row um like that from six to six but i can i just i, I share that because fasting you guys is so important it's so important and um Mine said the same things I have never been charged. Oh, okay. It actually says, oh, okay. Oh, Mitzi replying back to Pastor Amy. And so, Adela, thank you. Awesome. Breakfast time with Rig Nighty. Yes. And so, anyhow, I just shared that because fasting is so important. You know, we, a lot of people, some people don't even believe in fasting, um, but it's all throughout the Bible. Anytime there was, uh, somebody needed a word from the Lord or they needed the Lord to move, they fasted. When Esther needed the Lord to move on behalf of her people, she fasted. Daniel fasted, right? And so um, fasting, is it should be a part of our lifestyle. It should be a part of our lifestyle um, to deny your flesh. And that's all it's about. It's not just about pushing away the plate and, you know, it's about denying your flesh um, so that you can really, really hear from the Lord and get closer to the Lord and um, um, uh, really become one and in tune with him. Um, by denying your flesh and not putting all that stuff into your body. And so um, over this last seven days, um, the Lord has really been dealing with me in regards to purging, um, in regards to purging. And and so um, as I was in my prayer time with him yesterday, um, he just kept saying um, he wants to heighten our sensitivity to him and his voice. And that's definitely what, when you're fasting, that's definitely what he does during your fast is he really heightens your sensitivity. Um, like it, everything just seems so much clearer and, and, and you're really able to hear his voice. And so he's saying there are some things that he wants to do right now, uh, even before 2021. And I've been saying this, I've been saying this, I've been saying this every single week. Um, and, and I hear the Lord say, before I can do this, my daughters have to purge some things once and for all. And so for many of you, Devon said, we're in a purge. Amen. 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 And so, uh, 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 he's saying that there's some things that need to be purged once and for all. Mm. And so, uh, uh, um, so, so, so when you're delivered from something, when you're delivered from someone, when you're delivered for, from certain situations, that means you don't go back to those things. Right. And so you're, you're done with it. You're finished with it. And so it's just like, you know, we say when a baby is being delivered, y'all know, I just had my grandbaby and what, well, uh, the second one. And so, uh, with, uh, we, we say that she delivered or she's in delivery, she's delivering something. And when you deliver that baby, guess what? That baby can't go back in. Once that baby comes out, that's it. That baby is out there. And so this morning, a uh, God wants you to purge once and for all. All. And, and, and so it, it, he's saying that you've been going through cycles. I don't know who this is for. Good morning, Belisha. Good morning. I don't know who this is for, but he's saying that you've been going through the same cycles, the same cycles all your life, not just this year, not that just last year, but your entire life since certain situations have happened to you, you've been going through these same cycles. It's been a repeating cycle, like a spinning wheel. You're going through these same cycles. And he says this morning that it's time for you to let go of it once and for all, let it go 
for good my god my god and so let me let me pray real quick heavenly father lord god just drench us with your holy spirit on this morning oh god lord open up our hearts oh god open up our eye gates open up our ear gates heavenly father lord let us receive this word oh god and not just receive it oh god but let us take action on the word oh god lord whatever it is you have us to purge oh god bring it to our let it let it surface oh god bring it to our memories right now oh God, so that we can get rid of it and let it go once and for all. Because Father God, I know that you're ready to bless us. I know we're on the brink of a blessing, oh God. And so we just have to get rid of this one little thing, oh God, for our blessing to come. And so God, we thank you for your word. Lord, decrease me and increase you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. And so he said he's looking for pure Christians that can be used by him to further the kingdom. And so our scripture this morning, our scripture this morning, my God, comes from 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 20, 2 Tim, I'm sorry, chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 20 through 23. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 20 through 23. And it reads as this and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Y'all know that there's several different translations and sometimes you got to go through different translations to get Get an understanding and a revelation of the word. And it starts off in saying, in a wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver, and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions. So I want you to catch that right there. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions and the cheap ones are for everyday use. Oh my God, hallelujah. How many of you know that in our houses, that I know me, even me growing up, uh, uh, my mama had a china cabinet. And, and Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> this wasn't even in a message. My mama had a china cabinet. And in that china cabinet, she had all of her really pretty fine dining, her fine china. She had her plates that were rimmed with 24 karat gold around the plates. And we weren't allowed to use those plates on an everyday basis, right? The only times we were allowed to use those plates and those nice silver forks and gold forks and spoons was on special occasions and mostly it was like Thanksgiving and Christmas, right? You know, she had her nice crystal glasses, the real crystal, not the fake crystal, right? The real crystal glasses, right? And so it says the expensive utensils are used for special occasions and then the cheap ones are used for everyday use. The plastic and, and the cheap stuff was used every single day. And verse 21 says, if you keep yourself pure, my God, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Hallelujah. I can stop right there. That preaches by itself. <laughs> it says, if you keep yourself pure, you will be good morning, Pastor Dee Dee. You will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean and you will be ready for the master to use you for every good work. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so I looked up the word pure because we use the word pure a lot. Uh, uh, pure is a word that actually my sis, uh, prophetess uh, Natisha gave me the word pure. And pure means free of contamination, containing nothing that does not properly belong. And so the word of the Lord this morning, and it's a prophetic word, you guys, this morning, it's prophetic, it's going out prophetically, so receive this word. He says he can't use you if you are contaminated and cheap. My God, he can't use you if you are contaminated and cheap. So God, in this season, in this season, God is looking for holiness purity, humility, and those that truly love his people. I'm going to say that again because that's so important. In this season, right now, and, and, and this is what God is looking for. He's looking for holiness. He's looking for purity. He's looking for humility. And those that love, those that love his people have a love for his people no matter what. And so, Verse 22 says, run from anything that stimulates youthful lust. Instead, pursue righteous living, faithfulness, 
love, and peace. How many of us are truly, truly running away for those things that we've done in our youth? We're not doing those things anymore. We're not out partying and drinking and gambling and and and, and having sex with Tom, Dick, and Harry. We're running away from those youthful lusts and we're really running after righteous living. Are you running after righteous living on today? Uh, and, and don't say, well, God knows my heart. Uh-uh. I, I don't want to hear the God knows my heart because the thing about it is, yes, he knows your heart, but there's a scripture. Mm, and you know, I, I really want to find this scripture real quick. I, I got to read this scripture. Okay, God, uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 17 and nine, Jeremiah 17 and nine. It says the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked who really knows how bad it is? My God. So it's not about, oh, God knows my heart. No, you have to pursue after righteous living, faithfulness, love, and peace. My God. It says, enjoy the companionship. This is verse 22 of Tim, 2 Timothy. Enjoy the companionship of those who call on the Lord with pure hearts. So what does that mean? That means our friends. That's right. That means our friends. We should be enjoying the companionship of those who call on the Lord with a pure heart. Do your friends have a pure heart for God? Do your spouse have a pure heart for God? The people that you're hanging around, do your church members have a pure heart for God? Verse 23 says, again, I say, Okay, this is a, he says, again, I say, that means he said it once already. He said, again, I say, don't get involved in foolish Ignorant arguments that only start fights. My God, don't get involved with foolish, ignorant arguments that only start fights. And what they were specifically, good morning, Erica and Lonisha. What they were specifically saying here, good morning, Nick Mac, was that uh, uh, they were talking about, you know, you, you shouldn't be arguing and, and fighting over the word of God. You know, sometimes you can get into arguments about the word of God and you can start fights over the word of God, but we still shouldn't even get in foolish, ignorant arguments over just petty little stuff, right? Because it's, it's it's not righteous living, right? Because if we're if we're friends, if we're uh, called around people who have pure hearts, you wouldn't get into these little quarrels, right? And so I looked up the word purge. And so since he's talking about the great purge, he's saying the great purge, the great purge. I looked up the word purge. Well, what does really the word purge mean? And so the word purge means to get rid, clear, or free to rid of whatever is impure or undesirable. And see, some of us right now have some things about us. And I'm not going to talk about our environment because we always talk about our environment. We always talk about getting rid of the relationships and the and the things that's in, you know around us. But what about the things that are impure in our hearts? My God, what about the things that are impure and undesirable about ourselves? See, we all have something. Even I have something. We all have something that's undesirable about ourselves. Purge means to cleanse to purify, uh, 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 usually followed by of or from. Like I need to purge from, I need to purge of. And, and, and so I want you really, I, I want you to think about it just for a second. And if you don't know what you need to purge from, I need you to go ahead and lift up your voice to God and ask God, God, show me what I need to be purged from. And I want you to say it out loud to yourself. Nobody can hear you. And I want you to speak it in the atmosphere. I need to purge from. And then I want you to fill in the blank. I need to purge by. I need to purge from what do you need to purge from this morning? And a lot of you already know what you need to purge from because it's something that you've been dealing with. It's something that you've been struggling with for a very long time. What are you still carrying? See, there's some things that we've been carrying for so long and we need to purge from it. There's some things like unforgiveness that you've been carrying. There's some things like hatred. Yeah, hatred that you've been carrying. There's some things like pride. Uh-huh. See, pride. Yeah, y'all know that pride word, that P word, pride, proud, right? There's some things that, that, that you've been carrying that you need to get rid of before you can enter into 2021 because your blessing is just a blink away. But because you have not purged from these things yet, God is saying, I can't 
bless you yet. I need you to get rid of it once and for all. And so it's time to purge those things. I thought about God brought the memory of Lot. And you guys remember Lot and his wife and how they were in Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and, and the angel of the Lord came and, and, and walked them out because God was about to, to uh, get rid of, to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, right? And so y'all remember that as they were walking away, he told them to not look back. He said, don't look back. Don't, don't turn around. Don't look back. I need you to keep pushing forward. I need you to go forward. But what happened was Lot's wife, she said, I've been carrying Sodom and Gomorrah in me for so long. I've been carrying the things that they've done in me for so long. I've been carrying the weight of Sodom and Gomorrah within me for so long. So she had to look back because she was carrying it. Man, when she looked back, she was turned into a pillar of salt just like that. And so God is saying, what have you been carrying? You've been carrying it for so long and you continuously look back. You keep on looking back and I need you to turn around, look forward and go into the new destiny, go into the new thing that I have for you, but you got to stop looking back. And so you have got to purge that thing. See, Lot's wife needed to purge that thing so she didn't feel the need to look back. Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so you can't care, you can't continue to carry these things and expect God to bless you. You cannot continue to carry these things and expect God to bless you. My God, I got to hurry up, it's 551. And it says, uh, I, I wrote down, how do you know you are still carrying it? Because a lot of us, we don't even know that we're carrying it. Mm-mm. We don't even know that we've had it. We, we, we've dealt with this thing for so long that we don't even know that we still are dealing with it. We've been holding on to the hate for so long. We don't even know that it's starting to be a reflection of our environment. We've been holding on to the pride for so long. It's starting to be a reflection of our environment. We've been holding on to the to the uh, uh, foolishness for so long that we don't even understand that it's starting to affect our environment my god and so here's how you know that you're still carrying it when you think about it you get mad and angry mm. when you think about it you get mad and angry that tells you you're still carrying it when you think about it you blame your current situation on it if he didn't do this then I wouldn't be right here. If he didn't leave me, then I wouldn't be in this place right now. If, if, if he didn't rape me, then I wouldn't have these kinds of thoughts. If he didn't, if he didn't molest me, then I wouldn't be in this place that I am right now. I would have what I want to have. See, it's the blame, the blame game. But see, it's time out there. Now we need to purge those things, right? We need to forgive. We need to forgive. We need to forgive. We need to forgive. My God, my God. We need to forgive Cousin Pete who raped us. It's, it's, forgive Cousin Pete because you can't move on until you do that. You're still looking back. You're still looking back. My God, you got to stop blaming daddy for leaving mama and then y'all struggling. It's time for you to stop blaming daddy for that. It's time for you to stop blaming mama for being on drugs. And you were in a household maybe where your parents were on drugs and you, you can't continue to blame them for, for what your life is right now because of that. No, 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 no. You can't do that. You can't do that. You got to forgive uncle for molesting you. God wants you to be free today. We're going to free, God is going to free you today. Somebody is going to get free today. Mm, my God, hallelujah. And so I thought about Joseph and, and I thought about how, how Joseph could have played the blame game, right? There were so many times in Joseph's life that he could have played the blame game. Well, if they hadn't put me in the pit, if they hadn't, if I wouldn't have to run away from uh, uh, Pharaoh's wife and, and she wouldn't be blaming me for uh, uh, laying with her and, and accusing me of, of raping her or whatever it was, right? He, he, he didn't play that blame game. Even though he was in prison, he didn't play the blame game. He didn't sulk. He didn't blame her, right? He trusted God and he developed. He trusted God and he developed from it. 
He trusted God and he developed from it. See, he may not have known he was going to the palace, but he knew that he wasn't in the pit anymore. Hallelujah. He he didn't know that he was going to the palace. That wasn't in his, he didn't know that, but all he knew was I was no longer in in the pit, my God. And so you may be saying, I'm not in the palace yet, but I'm not that five-year-old girl getting fond of it anymore. I may not be in the palace yet, but I'm not in an abusive, toxic relationship anymore. I may not be in the palace yet, but I'm no longer in a home with drug addict parents. Oh, my God, I may not be in the palace quite yet, but I am no longer in the pit. Jesus, hallelujah. And so Esther could have played the blame game. Y'all know she could have been blaming God because God uh, uh, took her parents away from her. You guys, it said it didn't say how or what happened. All it said was that God, uh, that, that her parents died and her cousin Mordecai had to raise her. And so Esther could have blamed her God. She could have blamed God. She could have blamed somebody else. She could have blamed her parents. We don't know why her parents passed away, right? And she could have said, well, this is why my life is the way it is. Or, you know, I'm never going to get into the uh, the palace. I'm never going to be the queen. I'm never going to do any of these things. She could have blamed, used that all of her life. But she didn't use that. She didn't use that excuse. My God, she didn't use that excuse. And, 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 and so because of that, because of that, she knew that she was going to have to save her people. My God, she didn't say my life is a mess, so I can't be queen. I can't save my, my people because every time I think about it, I get depressed. Every time I think about my parents being gone, I get angry. She didn't think about it that way. All she knew is she had a work to do. That's all she knew is she had a work to do and she had to save her people. And so we, we, we don't have time to hold on to grudges. We don't have time to hold on to the past. We don't have time to hold on to unforgiveness. And so I, I heard uh, uh, Tiffany, uh, Tiffany Montgomery say that uh, you can't preach the gospel about a God you can't be delivered by. See, there's so many of us in the pulpits uh, uh, walking around evangelizing and preaching the word of the Lord, but yet we're still not delivered. There's still some things that have not be de been delivered in us quite yet. So how can we continue to go around preaching the gospel about a God who we don't even believe can deliver us? Because we're not delivered. It's been 20 years. It's been 30 years. It's been 40 years. Are you going to take it to your grave and not be delivered from it? Not purge from it? My God, my God. And so, uh, you know, you're quoting scriptures. You're touching and agreeing with people. You're, 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 you're helping other people get delivered, but yet you're not delivered yourself. And so we got to stop this, sis. We got to stop this. It's time to purge. And it's time to be set free once and for all. See, I never noticed it before. But if you look at the word purge, the word purge is P-U-R-G-E. But if you remove the G out of the word purge, you have the word pure. My God. So in order for you to be pure, you must purge. You got to get rid of that G and you must purge because see a lot of us have made, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. See, a lot of us have ma made that G and purge our, our, our small little God. Mm -hmm. we, we've made unforgiveness our small little God. We've made hatred our small little God. We've made pride our small little God, but we need to get rid of that. And once we get rid of that, then we can be pure. Jesus, Jesus. And so Purge anything that is holding you back and in the way of you being set free from God. He wants you to go to the next level, but you have to purge not just some things, but everything. See, some of us can purge one thing or this thing, but everything needs to be purged. Purging is a part of the spiritual growth process in your Christian walk. You cannot go higher with dead weights attached to you. For this next level, you will have to get rid of the weights. This is the word of the Lord. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that is so that so easily hinders our progress. And let us run with endurance the race that God has set before us. We can't run that race if we have those heavy weights. We can't run those 
those weights if we have hindrances that's affecting our progress. So we have to go into deep prayer. We got to go into deep prayer. We have to ask the Lord, where is my hindrance, Father? Where is my problem? Come on. Not, not where his problems at, not where her problems at. God fix her, God fix him. No, 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 no. Where is my problem? What do you want me to get rid of that's not like you? So you're going to have to ask those tough questions and do a self-examination. See, he's faithful to answer and show you, but the next step would be to follow through in obedience. See, once he shows you, now that you know, now you have to follow through and be obedient and purge that thing. You have to empty yourself before him so that you can move higher in him. And so you may be saying, well, I don't know how to let it go. I don't know how to let it go. I've held on to this thing for so long. It's become a part of me. Jesus. Jesus. But God is saying, daughter, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. This is the word of the Lord. Cast your cares on me because you no longer have to carry this weight around with you anymore. It's time to let it go. It's time to purge it. My God. My God, it said, the Bible says, come to me, all who are weary and heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. This is what the Lord of the word is, the, the, the word of the Lord is saying this morning. So this morning, I want you to lift your voices to God. Nobody can hear you. I don't know where you are. You might be in your car. You might be in your bed. You, I don't know what you're doing. If you're in your bathroom getting dressed. But I want you to lift up your voice to God on this morning and ask him to purge you from whatever you've been dealing with for all of these years. Ask him, God, I need you to purge it. I need to be able to forgive him. I need to be able to forgive her. I don't want to carry this. I don't want to be this person. I don't want to be like this. I don't want to have these thoughts anymore. I'm tired of allowing these thoughts to affect my life. I know you have more for me, God. I, oh my God, hallelujah. I know you have more for me. I know that you want me to go to the next level. I know that, that, that my destiny and I, I have a destiny and I have a future, but I need to get rid of this thing, God. I need to just let it go. And I'm tired of it resurfacing. It might resurface once a year or twice a year, or there might be some things that trigger it. There might be some people that trigger it. God, I need you to stop it. I need to let it go, God. I'm tired of being triggered when the holidays come around and I see this cousin or that uncle or that grandfather and it triggers up in my body and now my body is paralyzed. I don't know who that's for, but God, I need you to purge me of it. I need to get rid of it. I need to forgive. I need my heart to be cleansed, God. And so we, we need to be cleansed of all of these things. Ask him to forgive you because you have been disobedient to the will, to his will for your life. You've been putting more emphasis on that thing than you have of the plans that God has for you. You've put that thing and you've made that thing a little G. You've made that thing a little God in your life. And so it's time to remove that G and become pure. It's time to become pure in Christ. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to say a word of prayer. And I just pray over each and every one of you on today. That you truly, truly, truly purge those things. God has so much more for you. He has your blessing. It's right there. You know it's right there. You can feel it. Have you ever said, I know it's right there. I know I can feel it. It's coming. It's there. I know it's there. And it is. It's right there. But all this morning, he wants you to do this morning. He wants you to just purge that thing. Just get rid of that thing. It's time to forgive. It's time to let it go. That's what he wants you to do on this morning. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go into a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for being God. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for bringing us to this moment right now. Father God, I lift up each and every woman and myself, oh God. I lift us all up, every woman that's under the sound of my voice, oh God. I lift them up to you today. Let them cry out to you today. Let them come to you today and ask, what is it in me that I need to purge? What do I need to get rid of, Lord? Lord, I want to be pure. I want to be cleansed. I want to be filled with your Holy 
Holy Spirit. So get rid of the impurities that's in me, oh God, that's not like you, Lord God. Lord God, we repent right now for pride. We repent right now for negative thinking, Lord God. We repent right now for gossiping, for fornication, for adultery, for smoking, for drinking, Lord God. Whatever is contrary to your word right now, Father, we ask right now for forgiveness. We repent before you, oh God. God, free us from the strongholds that's keeping us bound, oh God. Loose us right now, God, in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, who the Son says free is free indeed, oh God. And we want to be free. Free us, oh God, this morning. Lord, free us. Help us to purge from all unrighteousness. We take captive every thought and every action that is not like you, oh God. Father, we bind evil tendencies towards others. We bind evil desires desires and we loose your grace oh god we loose good actions towards others who have even hurt us lord god lord give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us oh god God, right now, we ask that you give us a forgiving heart, Lord God. Release the bitterness, release the sadness, release the hatred, release the pride that may be buried down deep into our hearts. God, we we ask you to release that up out of us, oh God. Father, we forgive those who have done us wrong. God, we forgive those people who have done us wrong. We forgive him. We forgive her in the name of Jesus. God, we cry out to you, Heavenly Father, for your peace and your true healing once and for all. God, we thank you that we can be freed and we can live in abundance of joy because we know that joy is found in you. God, we thank you and we count these things done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. So I, 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 I implore on you this morning to take some more time out even after this call this morning and just lift your hands up to God. Just lift your hands up to our Heavenly Father. Surrender. Lifting up your hands is an act of surrendering this morning. And I'm sorry to go over, but this is what the Holy Spirit is putting in me right now. To just lift your hands up and surrender. Surrender to God. Ask him for that for, to be able to forgive. Ask him to purge you of those things that are impure. Ask him to cleanse you. And just take some more time out. Put on some worship music. Put on whatever you need to get into his presence. Whatever you need to do to get into his presence. And I'm telling you, he wants to free you this morning once and for all. So I thank you so much for getting on this morning. I know it wasn't your usual prosperity message and all of that, but that is what the word of the Lord has given me on this morning. So I'll be praying for each and every one of you all throughout today. I'll be praying for each and every one of you. And if the Lord leads me to, to inbox you, uh, I will be doing that this morning because uh, some of you guys he put on my heart this morning and I'll be inboxing you. And so, uh, listen, join us back here tomorrow morning where we'll have Minister Dr. Tammy on tomorrow morning at 5.30 a.m. Go and invite someone. Go and invite someone. Uh, bring them in. Let us fellowship and worship the Lord together. The more we worship him together as a collective unit, the more we can make an impact on the world. God bless you. I love you from the bottom of my heart. If nobody else loves you, Jackie loves you from the bottom of my heart. Have a great day.